end of session because there are people coming late and they will arrive maybe in one month's time or in January. So it's nice to record it because then people can just uh, check the video and at least have a little bit uh, more information about the PhD program. So that's why we are recording uh, the session. Uh, so welcome everyone, I'm Emilia Gomez, I'm the academic uh, coordinator of the PhD program, so any question about uh, academic uh, or uh, procedures, uh, you can contact me. Let me introduce a little bit uh, people here. Uh, uh, Mikel Olive, he's the director of our department, he will present a little bit our department to you. Davini Hernandez is the uh, one of the vice director, the head of director of the department, and she's also in charge of the teaching support unit. So if you have, if you are teaching, we will also say some something about that. Uh, then Aurelio Ruiz, he uh, is in charge of the research seminars uh, course, which is the only course, formal course, uh, formal. We will see later that you will have in the PhD program. And Lydia Garcia, I guess you already know her. <laughs> She will be the one that will solve all the problems <laughs> and all the yeah, questions all you may well. have <laughs> related to administration yeah, and uh, yeah. of the of the of the program. So the goal of this session is just to give you a lot of information about the PhD program and to let you know who could you can contact, which are the resources you have, and also uh, later on we will have some coffee so that you can interact with us also between you. And, uh, and then if you want, we will also organize some tour to the campus uh, in case you want to know a little bit more about it. It's raining, but uh, some things uh, you, can, you can see inside. Okay, so first maybe Mikel will start with that. Okay, thank you very much, Emilia, for the introduction. And welcome everybody. I think it's, uh, it's nice to see uh, new faces in the, at the department. Every year we have around 20 new students, new PhD students, and, and for us it's a, it's a pleasure to, to welcome all of you. Uh, we see people from all over the world. That's uh, quite common in our department. We have a, a structure with, with faculty from different places, and it's, it's quite common to, to, to share experiences and to have uh, this, this uh, added value of, of social relationships uh, among us. I have a some slides, I think, to share with you. This, this, uh, the next hour will be very busy. We, we have a lot of information to share with you because there are a lot of, uh, not only teaching staff, how the research is going to be, to be held, even how the, how the uh, PhD proposal is going to be presented in the next month. So there are a lot of information, very important information for you. But uh, my, my role here is just to introduce a little bit uh, where you are right now. No? This is uh, the department. We call it the Department of Information and Communication Technologies. This is the only technical department we have at, at the UPF. The UPF is a, it's a young university, mostly devoted to so social sciences. But uh, 15 years ago, we created that department. And this is where the technologies and engineering are, are, are going around. Uh, we have our PhD program, where you are enrolled. So congratulations, first of all, for being admitted. Uh, you will see uh, that this is a really uh, broad uh, PhD program. So we cover uh, some, a lot of topics. We will see now in, in, in a minute which are the main research areas of the department. We have, first of all, this, this brochure. I have some of these brochures in my offices, but there is the, the PDF link here in the bottom of the slide. In this brochure, uh, we have some of the information that we will share with you today, but there are uh, probably the bios of the faculty in our department is the most uh, interesting part. You, you can see just uh, browsing that document, which is uh, the flavor of the department. So we have people working in networking areas or multimedia contents or machine learning or uh, many other topics that we will see in a minute. Where are we? We are in one of the uh, three main campuses of the UPF. We are in here, we call it the campus Pablo Nou, Campus de la Comunicació. The, the area is called Glorias, which is the, the biggest square we have now under construction, <laughs> uh, close to our campus. And this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this will be the center of Barcelona in 10 or 15 years. This is what uh, Gaudí designed. Gaudí, no, Cerdà designed many years ago, and this is going to happen uh, soon. Hopefully, hopefully we, will, we will see it soon. And this is uh, the rest of the campus. Here we have mainly uh, technical the technical department, but we also have the audiovisual communication people and the 
linguistic uh, and interrelation people. So we have mainly engineering and, and contents here at, the, at this campus. In the rest of the campus, we have the Ciutadella, it's the largest one. In the Ciutadella campus, we have humanities, we have law, we have economics, we have uh, political sciences, so it's a social sciences campus. And the small one in the, in the uh, bottom part of the, of the map, we have the Mar campus, the C campus, where you have the, the bio people there. So these are the three main campus in, in, at the UPF that probably you will have to move sometimes. You, or I, I invite you to, to know the rest of the campus, which are quite uh, good and are uh, uh, quite close. So in, in ten, 10 minutes riding, you are there. Can we move? OK, which are the, the tick values? So we are uh, a small department in a social sciences university, but doing technical stuff, uh, most of them applied in several areas, but uh, working at a global scale. As you may know, uh, as you may know uh, the UPF is very uh, well uh, situated in the different international rankings, so we play that, that league. It's one of the best, uh, one of the best Spanish universities, and uh, according to our uh, age, we are one of the best uh, international young universities. This is stated in, in different rankings. Why? Because we, we try to do our things in, the, in uh, uh, having an in international scope, working with, uh, you know, collaborating with other colleagues at, in different universities, so the, the amount of collaboration we have are uh, uh, worldwide. The disciplines we, we do here are several. We try to do as many interdisciplinary uh, theses as, as possible. For example, we have this Maria de Maestro program, which is a research award we received this year that tries to combine research from uh, among different uh, research groups, trying to do things in a different way and trying to improve uh, our research and our impact in, in, in that way. Okay, I think we can move. Uh, we not only have the PhD program, we have also undergrad programs. Probably some of you will teach, will do some uh, teaching stuff in some of these programs. We have bachelor's in biomedical engineering, computer engineering, telecommunications, audiovisual. And the last is the mathematical engineering on data science that will start uh, in the next course, okay? Uh, the postgraduate education is also broad. The is, is directly linked to, the, to some of the research groups, so it's very well connected with the research. It's the first step towards our research. So we have here the list of masters that we offer right now in sound and music computing, cognitive systems, intelligent interactive systems, and so on. So I have a question here. How many of you have been enrolled in one of these programs? Okay, that's good, good news. So <laughs> the, the master is, uh, according to our view, is, a, is, is the first step towards the PhD. So having some of you uh, being with us uh, previously enrolled in one of these programs, really, it's, it's, uh, these are good news, right? Can we move? Okay, going to the research area, the, the organization inside the department is a little bit messy sometimes, but we try to uh, present ourselves in, in, uh, according to the areas. We have around 20 different research groups, which is a long list, but uh, we try to organize this uh, research, these research groups among a few areas. Here we have the, for example, the visual technologies, where uh, cognitive and intelligent systems, communication and networks, Computer, computational biology and biomedical systems and brain and cognition. These are the five main uh, topics or areas uh, where uh, all the research groups are, are, are located. So some of them are in the middle of two areas, but this is part of the, of the values of the department. Here you, ha you have the long list. I won't go through all of them. You can here probably easily locate the research group where you will be uh, developing your, your research work, right? So this is, uh, I guess, an updated list of the different research groups. All this information is on the website, so this is not a problem. Which is some of uh, figures, key facts about the, the people. For example, we have tenured faculty, uh, which is uh, 44 uh, different people. Uh, some of them fully de dedicated to research, so the, the research uh, profile is really one of the trends, one of the uh, most important facts of the department, and then uh, a bunch of research staff involved in different uh, research projects or different collaborations we have, so on. 40% of them are international, uh, are from abroad. 
We have also around uh, nine, 900 diff, uh, undergrad, undergraduate students enrolled in the bachelors I, I, I presented several nights ago. And then uh, 340 uh, masters and PhD students, where you are, where the level of internationalization is a little bit higher. So 60% are international. So coming from abroad, from a, with a master from a, an, a foreign university, or, or even a, uh, with a bachelor from a different country than Spain. Then uh, here we have some of the previous positions of the faculty we have right now. So here are some flashy names here, Stanford, Cambridge. Uh, not all of them are coming from the university, from the academia. Some of them are coming from the industry, as you can see here. So this is just a, a summary of the things. The research, the research is our key driver, I must say. By the way, we have here the vice rector of, for research of the university, which is one of our faculty, is, is Angel Lozano. <laughs> And uh, here you have some figures. So we have a bunch of uh, resource, uh, resources for developing our research uh, within uh, mainly from Europe. Europe is the main uh, source of funding for our research, organized in different ways. The Horizon 2020, we have the ERC grants, and so on. And this is the, and here probably the last uh, recognition we got is the Maria de Maestro that I mentioned previously, which is a, a transversal program trying to connect people interested in doing research where the main, the main uh, path is uh, data-driven knowledge. So that's the, the thing. We also have some people not from our department helping us. This is our advisory board. They were here uh, right before the summer. They come here from time to time and, and they uh, follow uh, our projects, our, the outcomes from our department and they assess us in different ways, huh? how to improve, how to become excellent in research. And these are really uh, friends, friends of us trying to provide the best advice. And we also are very, very well connected with the industry, not only local, but also global industry. So here we can see uh, some uh, logos from the main stakeholders of the, our department. We have long relationship with, with some of them. Huh? Entrepreneurship is also uh, one of the things that has been uh, uh, rising a lot in, in the past. We have been creating several spin-offs as a result of your research. That's quite important. Not only from professors, but also from students, especially postgraduate students are, ha are having interesting ideas that can be uh, connected with a, with a spin-off, with a new company. And this is part of the universities, providing the the tools, providing all the help that in these uh, first stages uh, these type of projects are claiming. And uh, we have a very busy agenda. So we not only do classes at the bachelor, master, and so on, so we also are, are organizing international events uh, from time to time. And this is the agenda for the next month. In November, we have an, a workshop organized by, by Vanessa, which is here another faculty. Uh, she is uh, working in cryptography and she is uh, organizing this. This is lasting for one week, I guess. So it's not only one day, it's the whole week, right? All, most of these events are, are open, so if not fully open, some of the conferences uh, are uh, a good option to, to listen and to hear from uh, the experts worldwide any of the current topics that we're working here at the department. So we are other things, other visual aspects, processing and language learning, and, and other workshops and other topics. So this is a uh, part of the agenda of the department. OK, these are also more, more things. So we, for example, we have the WebRTC meetup. Uh, we are very uh, happy because we, the fact of being in Barcelona means that Barcelona attracts a lot of, a lot of events. So we try to, to take some advantage of that, and as soon as we have some some interested event connected to our research, to our work. We try to establish links uh, with it and trying to do uh, collaborations and so on. And these are some of the things that have been happening here. Probably one of the most important things is the Mobile World Congress. That's, this is placed in late February. And some of the things, for example, the web RTC, this is one of the things that we are doing in connection with the Mobile World Congress. But there are several other things. OK. This is 
Yes, maybe I can. Okay, uh -huh. yes, yes. Yeah, I can mention there's also some activities that we don't organize, but you organize, like uh, students. Uh, uh, just uh, so we are also open to any uh, initiative or uh, any kind of uh, of uh, interest you may have. These are some examples. For instance, we have a deep learning study group, which is coordinated by one of our students, Ramon Nogueira, and also by Aurelio Ruiz, and uh, we have also some. Uh, some uh, courses or some uh, group working on, on 3D printing of uh, medical images. We have also some interest in, in gender balance in ICT. So, and we have a space, the hack lab, that can be used for, for those kind of projects in the library you may, you may visit later. So we are open to any initiative, so we also support student initiatives uh, as far as we can uh, in that sense. Um, let me uh, tell you a little bit about the PhD program. Now you are enrolled, so you s you are starting now your your journey uh, into the PhD. And I, w I wanted to to give you some ideas of what is the what it will be like. So um, the PhD program, uh, we have many uh, alumni now that are working in industry or in academia. So there is no single path into the PhD program. You can still uh, get some training, you can still tailor it to your interests and also to what you think will be your future. So the idea is that this uh, PhD program is not a fixed profile but can be tailored to different interests. Uh, and uh, it's also nice to that you have a mix of profiles and mix of people that can benefit from synergies and from joint projects apart from their specific thesis. So, um, in fact, we are uh, also supporting uh, some uh, people applying to to fellowships uh, outside of our PhD program. For instance, these are some examples of Google and Facebook fellowships that are now uh, with closed deadlines, and some or, uh, of our students also got them uh, got them in previous editions. So, just to give you some uh, ideas, we uh, our PhD program, as you may know, lasts for three years plus one possible extension. Uh, so it will be a total of four years of uh, PhD. Uh, in the first years, you, you need to, to follow uh, our research seminars. It's our main uh, training uh, course. And you can, of course, it's mandatory in first year, but you may attend also some of those seminars when you are in second, third year, etc., because some of them are also designed for people in the third or fourth year. Uh, mm -hmm. And then in the first year, uh, you will probably uh, have to uh, prepare a PhD proposal. So you may already have some ideas about your PhD topic. You may also have maybe written something. But this year is really the time you have to, to focus and uh, do your uh, state of the art and just get to know what you will be working and define mm -hmm. what is your proposal for your PhD. Uh, this year is crucial because uh, as far as our experience, people that have a clear idea after the first year and has some already some contributions uh, will be more successful in their PhD, especially uh, to finish in four years uh, in the, with the extension. Three years is uh, maybe not the, uh, very uh, usual that people arrive, but uh, three mm -hmm. and something will be mostly what you will be expected to finish your PhD. And uh, this, of course, in the first year, you have the support of your supervisor, but you also have uh, myself as uh, academic coordinator to have another person to to talk to and you will also have Aurelio Ruiz as a person coordinating the research seminar so it's a uh, it's a year where you will be more in contact maybe with your colleagues working in other groups or working in other topics and it will be important as a starting point to 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 do this connection uh, also and to have this contact then the second and third year will be um, mostly working with your supervisor in your project. But as far as, uh, of course, we also um, have to uh, evaluate in a yearly basis uh, your achievements and, and the fact that you, can, you, are, uh, you are advancing in your PhD and you will be able to, to finish uh, at least. And we can plan also for, for the end of your PhD. And we have a possible extension of four years. So and uh, now you have three years, and if you want a fourth year, you have to ask for it. And if you ask for it, you have to justify 
uh, on the work that has been done because we want to avoid that there is people abandoning the PhD program after many years or that there are people that they didn't focus and they really, I mean, it's not, there's no more <laughs> formalities than that. You have one course to, to attend, you have to prepare, prepare your PhD proposal and then you have to submit your uh, uh, report. Of course, the first year is kind of uh, crucial because in this PhD proposal, as I uh, told before, you have to show that you can do a PhD uh, so that you are able to undertake original research uh, at the PhD le level. And then we will help you to, to, to end up showing that. It's basically a report that you have to do where you show uh, that you understand the state of the art, you, uh, you plan to make uh, scientific contributions, and you have a clear idea how to do that. And uh, of course, uh, this PhD proposal, you have to, to write it and you have to present it in front of the jury. So we will also provide some training for, uh, for writing skills and presentation skills for you. So this is basically your job for, from now to, to end of the year. This PhD proposal is done in July, but it, ha is, it can also be extended in September. But we recommend this extension for people that started in January or February, but you that uh, you have started now in October, you may think you have to do it in July or end of June or first of July. And uh, there will be a jury uh, that is usually uh, defined by or formed by your supervisor, another faculty member of the department uh, that is uh, maybe recommended by your supervisor that might be maybe from uh, closest, er closest uh, area. And then there is another member that we, as a, as a PC committee, we define someone to also to, to review your, your proposal. And then, of course, you have to send a report before the presentation and everything. We will publish all these slides, and this is also in our internet, but we will give it also so that you have this information. And uh, of course, if in the first year you are not able to pass this, uh, this stage, you, you, you have some time to to, to do it again. So you have six months to repeat this PhD proposal. This is a very important step because uh, as I said before, it's uh, like having uh, pushed in the, uh, really in the first year, it's, uh, it's also um, a way to, to be successful in your PhD. Uh, some administrative procedures that maybe I will summarize or L Lydia can give uh, more details, but we have a yearly enrollment from 1st to 10th of October, but we have also people joining later. That's why we record the session. Uh, but also it's important that uh, there is uh, one uh, committee in the department which is in charge of PhD and postgraduate that has to approve uh, all the modifications you will do from your initial plan. For instance, if you want to change supervisor, you have to ask uh, the committees you, there is a formality to ask, uh, to inform that you will change supervisor. Or if you want to uh, have two supervisors, you also have to, to inform. So it, it happens that people just uh, change and they don't, <laughs> they don't inform. But uh, so as you may know that there is this uh, procedure that you have to follow. And also if you want an extra year or you have to, to deposit, you will have also to do it in, in the, to formally, and these are mostly meetings, so you have to plan in advance. Um, we also have uh, in this committee the possibility to, to ask for extra funding for traveling, uh, for conferences, so we have some travel grants you can apply uh, that, uh, no may maybe now, but when you publish, and uh, if there is no funding from your, for, for your project, you may also uh, apply for that. And then it's important that we have a tool for updating your, your research plan and all the activities related to the PhD that it's in Campus Global. I don't know if there will be any specific training on that, but. Yeah, so it's nice that you have uh, your own like blog of activities maybe one which is more scientific for your supervisor, but we don't need so many details. We just need to know if you went to a, a research visit to a place, we need to know uh, about that. And if you went to a conference, we also need to report because then we will assess based on this uh, report. So this is a document or, a, or application.
So the, yeah, the only course we have for this PhD program is the research seminar, so the coordinator is Aurelio. Maybe you want to say a few words about that? Hi, I'm Aurelio. Welcome to the PhD program. And in fact, I'm not going to talk uh, very extensively about this because next Thursday at 3.30, we have the introduction to the course. So we'll go uh, with detail uh, about the requirements, the different uh, courses, whatever, but for those who are not with us. So basically, <coughs> this course is a series of seminars. There are research seminars and there are seminars aimed at training you on non-research skills. Uh, so that you can, there are two targets, so that you can uh, perform better when preparing your research proposal by the end of the year, and you can start preparing yourself for being an independent researcher already during the first year. So you can, the type of topics that I am mostly coordinating are, as I said, on the one hand, things you need to know as a researcher, and which include ethical issues, data management, intellectual property, that at some moment in your research life will be essential. So uh, we want you to start working on them since the beginning and work on them already for your research proposal. And the contrary, th things that could support your career. We plan to, to have some sessions on potential career paths, as Emilia mentioned. No, uh, potential pa career paths are very broad, like academia, industry, entrepreneurship, whatever. So we would like to have some specific seminars for you to start thinking about that and start uh, giving the right steps in that direction already during your first year. So uh, important is that for the non-scientific uh, research, uh, attendance is basically compulsory, including the one next, next week, and that you will be evaluated on some work related to this, related to your research proposal, so basically the parallel side on, on your research proposal, which will deal with research topics, you will be requested to elaborate on how all these topics affect uh, well, this research proposal and see that you give, at least in this year, a sufficient thought and action uh, on them. And next Thursday, we will, yeah. we will cover the, the topics with detail. Uh, the list of topics is, is closed, but of course, we can add additional topics if you have any interest. So feel free for the seminars in general to invite speakers to propose yourself as a speaker if there's something you would like to share and to add uh, topics to, to this list. I, uh, so I, c I can try to find a right speaker for that if that's of your interest. So thank you. Yeah, I want to also to mention that uh, this uh, research seminar is the only mandatory uh, course you have in your PhD. So it's mandatory. You cannot uh, uh, pursue it or you cannot uh, pass your PhD proposal without this course. Okay, this is important to know because uh, some people think, okay, it's uh, okay, but there's only two things you have to do. <laughs> you have to do your PhD proposal, you have to pass this course. And uh, you will see it's not very difficult, but still, uh, you might have to plan if you want to travel for a for instance, for a research stay, maybe not in the first year, but some people still, or if you are doing an industrial PhD and you are not here, then we have to think about, we have to see how we can manage to for this course. So it's important at least to talk to Aureli also next week and try to, to plan. I wanted to say that there are uh, uh, one event that we organize uh, every year, which is the doctoral student workshop. Uh, it's an annual workshop for our PhD students that take place here in March. We have not uh, a day yet, but it's a, a place where people present their ongoing work, they present to the department, but uh, last year we also have people from other universities. For instance, we have students from Primary University of London that came here to present their work, and we had also many visitors, like we had people from companies and people from other universities in Barcelona, so we try to showcase all the research that PhD students are, are doing. Uh, so we will uh, send an email for you to take part and we are always looking for volunteers for organizing. It's very interesting experience to organize a workshop and it's also very interesting to take part in the, in the, in the process, not only as an attendee but also inside. So if, you, if anyone is interested to take part, you can contact Aurelio or myself, and we will also send an email to you. And 
<coughs> there is also one initiative from uh, from the university, which is the research in four minutes competition. That is a competition where PhD students, not only for our from our department, but from other departments in the UK, they they present the research in four minutes, and there is a competition. So the, uh, we have been very successful in our department, and it's not only a, w a very nice way to to present your work, but also if you check the videos, you can see what different people are doing. So it's nice to to see some of the videos for have inspirations also for for your work and. We will maybe ask you to participate, and uh, it's, uh, I think it's in June or July, at the end of the year. Uh, apart from the from your compulsory uh, seminars, there are many seminars uh, that uh, people in the department are organizing. Like there's uh, the CBC, the Center for Brain and Cognition. They have also their seminar series. There are some integrative seminars from the department, which are also very general, and then maybe we will include also in the research seminars. And uh, there's meetups that we support, like meetups in deep learning. There are many things going on, so you will <laughs> have to select also the things you want to attend. But we don't force anyone to attend uh, extra seminars. Uh, this is uh, everything that I wanted to say. Now I will introduce also Vanessa Daza. She's uh, uh, in charge of uh, teaching. Uh, uh, also in the in our department, also she's vice the director of the department, so sh she's uh, doing the teaching assignment, and she will tell you a little bit. So she's the one responsible of your grants, teaching grants. So, uh, so that it's also important mm -hmm. for for those of you where the funding is uh, linked to teaching. It's very important to do very well this teaching, so that uh, <laughs> uh, everything goes well and we don't have any problems. So you will. Okay, thank you. So let me explain you basically what uh, Emilia suggests. So any of you should have probably one of these uh, grants, meaning one of the department grants, uh, either PIF 1, which means you have some teaching duties, 60 hours per year, PIF 2 grant, which meaning you have 40, hour, uh, 40 hours per year, uh, FPU, FI, FPI, I don't know if you know all of you, <laughs> all these. <laughs> you sign, a, I remember you, you sign a contract, and in that contract should be written PIF1, PIF2, uh, PIF3, uh, or then you are applying to all the contracts. So if you don't know, please let me know. My email was at the, at the other slide, so and at, at the, the end, one. yeah, and at the end I, I, I will repeat it. So. So the thing is, basically, there are some grants that uh, you have mandatory to teach. So depending on the grant, 60, 40, 30 hours, but you have to teach. So I'm, I'm the person responsible to assign you the teaching. Uh, then there are some other uh, grants that maybe because of uh, it's uh, these industrial people or then uh, some of the people did FI, the ones from the government, and then maybe you have your own fellowship from, from your country, then you don't have to teach, but, but you can if you want. So let me <laughs> tell you, <laughs> looking for <laughs> people that is interested in teaching, so you will pay t be paid extra for teaching 70 hours, uh, 70, <laughs> 70 hours per euro. <laughs> I don't think this is a good deal. But 70 euros per hour, I think it's a much better deal. So if you're interested, please check the, um, the link that I will show you, I think, in a fewer slides, not still. And uh, talk also to your supervisor. Some supervisors are open that you do some teaching, some others not. So once you you clarify this point and this point and if you're interested contact me and send me uh, the proposal of what you would be interested to teach so everybody is welcome to teach some subject for this year it's almost everything covered but you will be around for some other years so as far i mean as soon as you know please let me know and uh, then there is also even though for the fi and the f there are some restrictions so people with the FPI can teach but mm, they cannot teach uh, 100 hours so they only can teach these 60 hours in the second and the third year so um, 
it depending on the on your grant there are some constraints but in any case if you are interested please send me an email and uh, first of all uh, talk to your supervisor and we can talk what can you teach for the next uh, for the next uh, year uh, what does an hour mean because some of people some people think okay that's one hour mean I'm going to, to the class, to the lab, and I'm doing the class and that's it. And no, it's something else. It means that you go to the class, you prepare it first, uh, you correct the labs, you teach it, you try to uh, motivate the students. Everything is covered in one hour. So when I mean one hour, 70 hours per hour, this hour means all these things, the preparation and the whole thing. Um, usually you will be assigned to seminars or practices. One, I'm always trying to do it in one hour, in one subject, at most two, except some people ask me three because they want to touch different, cover different uh, things. And more details directly from, from the coordinator of the subject. So all the people that now has a, a grant from the department should know what uh, teaching is gonna do for this year. Is it like this? Everybody knows? No, your name is? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I sent you an email. Uh, you're going to teach Estructura de Dadas y Algoritmas U with Dulos Sala. <laughs> Dulos didn't contact you. So, okay, some, some coordinators are, are a little bit slower than, than I am, but I sent you an email and I told you that you will be in charge of this, and Rafael Ramirez is also in force of it. Ah, okay, that might be the problem. Okay, then we, the, the, that's the work on back. back. <laughs> <laughs> some, some extra information. So you will be teaching in the, in the second term, beginning on, on January. A part of Magdalena? Okay, so I hope that everybody that has this the department grant knows what to teach. Otherwise, please, again, send me an email. Uh, and usually we'll, you will receive information from the coordinator. This is the person that knows exactly what is gonna, how it's gonna be the subject. So I know about the assignment, but I don't know the details of the subject if, if you have to go to, the, to that place or the other. So for this, uh, these details, please contact uh, the coordinator, which is a permanent uh, professor, usually in the department, and she's gonna, she's gonna contact you and, and, and then you agree or what you, what you what what and how you have to, to teach this this okay uh, languages this is something important because as uh, as Mikel and, uh, mentioned there is a lot of people from all around the world this means that we you have to teach and you have to teach in in Spanish Catalan or English these are the official languages in from the university in the first year mainly is Spanish and Catalan, even though there are already some groups that are in, in, in English, like the one that Magdalena will teach in the next term, in the first year, but there are some small groups uh, in English. Then the idea is that in the second year we are introducing the English, and then at actually in the third and the fourth, even I would say almost everything is, is in English. So there, if you, have, if you are coming from abroad, then you will have more opportunities to uh, choose subjects in the from the second and the and the, from the third and the fourth uh, year. Master, some of you, no, it's not usual, but some of you teach in, in some in some master course, so everything will be taught in English. And one important thing, one very important thing, is that uh, after the first year, a mandatory requirement is that you you manage to speak. In, in either Spanish or Catalan. So at least mm, try to communicate. That's the, the point. You should communicate, you should be able to communicate uh, with the students. Uh, some of you, is, it's not always the case, but some of you only can teach subjects in the first year because of your background. And, and if you only can teach in the first year, mainly it's in Spanish and Catalan. And basically you're only for the students that are coming from that, the, or from a grant of the department, the other ones no. But for the ones that have this department grant, uh, this, this is a requirement to to renew your contract. So it should be added that I will add for the last version that this is only a requirement for people that has a, a, a grant from the department. Um, 
Catalan, I think that the university has some free courses to promote Catalan. It's not the case for Spanish, but uh, from, from the management team, we decided to promote uh, also the, the opportunity that if you are here also uh, learn uh, Spanish. And during the first year, we will refund the course. This is the link to the course that uh, you can take here at the university. From the, you cannot come and say, okay, at ne near my home, there is no. But if you go here and you take this course and you pass, then the, you will get the, the, the tuition refunded from for the first year. And if you have any doubts about your teaching, if now because you arrived late, I'm assigning something, but you prefer to teach something else from next year, or maybe when you teach the subject, you were expected something else and you would like to change, please let me know. This is the email that I would prefer that you contact for all the teaching uh, things. The other one is the personal one from the university, but if, if it's possible, I think it's better if, if, here, if you send me the email here to socdirectio.centradetic. Because behind here, a part of me, there is also Jana Safrankova and Luis Bosk, who helped me from the administrative uh, staff to solve all the all this um, all, all this puzzle, I would say. I would say. So, um, if you send me there, then uh, everybody is aware of, of all this information. So, thank you. I don't know if you have any question. That's it. I leave because I have to teach. So. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about teaching. We'll see around. Okay. Um, so some of you already know me eh? because in the second half of September I uh, already gave a seminar on how to teach uh, in our school, in our department. So those of you I hope that are teaching in this first quarter, in this first term, already know the basic of how teaching is organized and which are the main tools, which is the support that we offer. Eh? If not, if you are teaching this first quarter and you uh, didn't attend for whatever reason the session that we have in the second half of September, please feel free to contact me. Eh? In this session that we have, and then for the rest, those of you teaching in the second quarter or in the third quarter, there will be an additional session on how to teach in our context um, by the end of this quarter, it will be in December. Eh? in mid-December, I guess, so that you are ready for the second and the third uh, trimester. In this session, what we explain are the practical aspects for the first day of teaching, and how we organize the groupings, uh, the basic regulations uh, around teachings that the students know very well, and that is useful that you also know, uh, because you will be communicating with the students all the time, and also the spaces that we use to uh, facilitate the students' access to the resources, that we use also for grading, et cetera. So it's also good that you know uh, the different resources that we have and the different tools uh, that we are using to support our teaching, including also uh, the units uh, at the level of our, um, of our school, of our uh, unit, uh, but also at the level of the university, the services that we offer to support you with teaching and learning methods, with uh, teacher training, um, et cetera. So there is a unit that you can find here in our building that is the teaching uh, for quality, the, 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 the unit for teaching quality and innovation. It's a teaching support unit. We have a, per a person coming from with an educational background, a pedagogue, Veronica Moreno, that is here in this floor, just, just beside, in an office beside here. So she's available to discuss with you any issue that you may have around your teaching skills, essentially. Um, and, and, you, and you can also contact me uh, around these aspects. So because we are in charge of, of quality uh, uh, in, in, in teaching, but also other aspects, it may be uh, the case that you will find us sending you emails or looking for you in your offices so that you participate in the, in the studies that we typically do, uh, depending on the, on the needs uh, or the problems that we identify. For example, two years ago, we did a study um, that was aiming at understanding to what extent you were comfortable with your teaching duties, with the, the workload, how are you 
um, we're able of you know, combining research and teaching. So this is a study that we did two years ago where we identified the interest of having these sessions on, on how teaching is organized and explaining better your duties and all these things. Um, probably also this, uh, this year we will do a study that is more related to the satisfaction with the PhD program and all the aspects around uh, the, the, the seminars, uh, and the organization of the PhD. Um, so this is also something that you will find uh, Veronica and myself uh, uh, sending you emails and looking for you uh, because we will strongly uh, need your participation. Mm, I think it's, there is a lot of information. <laughs> I will end up with uh, two slides, or one about our international DTIC office. Some of you have already had some contact uh, when maybe people from applying for visa or uh, before arriving uh, to, the, to the department. So there is a one international office uh, which is, uh, they have a website and also an email that you can uh, contact also uh, and they will, uh, they will just help you also with uh, many things that you may need. It's practical things, practical stuff. And uh, finally, there's also this welcome package. Uh, uh, that also um, will help you and also in the secretary will help you to get email or get access to email or to Campus Global, which is the intranet we have for teaching or to get um, uh, with, with Wi-Fi network if, or at least to know where's the information. They will also help you in the, in the secretary, which is in the first floor, uh, just uh, that, that, that side and you can contact these people. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was the, the end of our talk. So now I would uh, maybe like to invite you to introduce yourself because uh, we have talked a lot, but uh, mm -hmm. at least maybe we don't know all the faces and all the people. So it would be nice if you can just just stand up or if you don't want to stand up, but <laughs> so that we can or and see your name and also we, who is your, if you have a supervisor and uh, the group and uh, then maybe where are you from or I don't know. But <laughs> so it will be very nice for us to at least uh, get to know the faces and uh, with the names and maybe also see who came to the, yeah, can you just start? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Hi, I'm Andrea. I come from Florida, Italy. I work uh, in the Global Cloud Village, which is one of the partners group, the large partner, and uh, the Global Cloud Project Office in Santi. So, yeah. I'm Hi everyone, I'm Fabio, I'm from the village, and I'm also the village secretary of the International Digital
<laughs> Hi, I'm Michel. I'm from Barcelona. I study computer science at the UAB, and I will be uh, working with Anders and Christian in my first year in the UAB. Hi. Okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, I think it's also nice that you see that different people doing different stuff with different backgrounds, so it's also a challenge uh, for you to, to make things together apart from your own groups because you will be mostly in your own <laughs> group with your supervisor, but it's always nice to explore other synergies you may have with people doing different things and it also uh, creates a lot of nice projects and uh, that uh, gives you some other ideas for your, for your research. So I think that's all. If the, anyone has a question about what we explained about, uh, is there any question you want to to ask now? Yes. <laughs> we will um, now or never. <laughs> 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 we will put them online on the on the website of the PhD program, and we will put the video also there. And uh, and. It's also nice to, to follow the Twitter uh, because we are, oh, now it's not, <laughs> it's just uh, the logo that, uh, that uh, no, it's the TIC uh, uh, UPF. So in Twitter, we are also posting all the activities and all the things we are doing. So it's also nice to follow and, and, and be, uh, be seen. And then uh, we now, uh, it's raining a lot. <laughs> Now we can, maybe for the tour to the campus, it will be like inside tour in the campus, but you can just uh, have a coffee uh, upstairs in the fourth floor because we wanted to use the terrace, but it is of course not very, <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> a good idea. So, um, yes. so you can go to the fourth floor and there will be some coffee there and then we can, and then we can talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming.